Hello, hello. Welcome back to Crazy Epping Mommy, episode 136. I'm your host, Elise DeLucci. How you doing, baby? I am on such a Trader Joe's kick, you have no idea. I was in the supermarket yesterday, you know, Trader. And I'm standing online and I'm wondering, why are all the cashiers wearing Hawaiian shirts? So, fact of the day, it's because part of their theme at Trader Joe's is they're traders on the culinary sea. So, they're wearing Hawaiian tropic shirts and it's because these traders on the sea, they're searching the globe for the best and coolest items to bring home to their customers. I think that's pretty novel, by the by. I don't know if Joe of Trader Joe's is Italian. I couldn't really figure out how to pronounce his last name. It, it, it's like Italian or Portuguese, whatever. But he's from California. He's passed away, but you got to look him up. It's interesting background, that guy. You know, um, well, I could tell you, he, he worked in, in uh, retail, in, in retail stores, right? And in 1958, he was working for a store called Pronto Markets. And Pronto Markets was going to be a competitor to 7-Eleven. So he's working in, in Pronto. And uh, after running six stores, the company says they want him to liquidate the stores to sell them. I'm assuming they weren't doing well. And what he wound up doing, you're going to die. He said, you know what? Instead of selling off the stores, liquidating them, I'm going to buy them. And he bought the stores he was working for. And he renamed them Trader Joe's, named after himself, and turned it in to what it is today. It wound up being acquired. And this was, I think this happened in, um, yeah, this was in 1967. I wrote it down. And then he sold the chain to Aldi the German supermarket chain that we know, uh, he sold it to them in 1979, and I think he he stepped down as CEO from Trader Joe's in the late 80s, early 90s. But in, interesting guy. Look him up. Look him up on Wikipedia. But, I, you know, I don't... <clears throat> when Trader Joe's first uh, started popping up around Manhattan, it was a big deal. Did we have it like 10 years ago? I think it was down in the Union Square area. It was a big deal. They had the wine shop. They had two buck chuck and all that kind of stuff. And I would go, but, you know, I'd walk in there. I felt like everything's like all like granola and nuts. And, you know, at the time, like I was all about like Cosmopolitans and Cheetos. So I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't the biggest fan. And also I was young, like, in my 20s and I wasn't necessarily thinking about the prices of things in the supermarket you know not like I do now but I have to say I really got a a, a, a love affair going with them it started during the pandemic because there's one on the Upper West Side that I like to go to and there was always lines wrapped around the block right and uh, yeah, I was like why, why are there the lines I mean I know the prices are good but what I didn't really love, and I, which you know prevented me from going in all these years, was because they don't really sell real brands, you know. So if I wanted Barilla or whatever, like I, you know, I, I don't want like Trader Giuseppe's macaroni. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm at my aunt Lisa's house in Tribeca one day, and and uh, she she gives me a cookie that she had, and she said, "Oh, I got it at Trader's," and it was an imitation. Tate's Bake Shop cookie, and I swear to God, it was out of this world, delicious, copycat, couldn't even tell the difference. And that's it. I was sold. And then next time I saw the store on the Upper West Side and I saw that line wrapped around the block, I said, this is why. So I went in and I started to fall in love with certain products, and I'm saving them for my products of the day later on in the episode, so I'll tell you. But, you know, they they really – um. They are a really good operation, you know, and they're known, and you should support them. And no, of course they're not an advertising. But the reason why you should, you know, when Trader uh, Joe, when Joe, the founder, he said he was making the supermarket, making his his store for artists, uh, musicians, excuse me, opera singers, writers who are ridiculously talented and ridiculously underpaid, right? And that is who he was making his store for. So the prices are really good. They pay their workers really well. They have amazing health benefits. It's a nice store to support. And I I like, I do like a lot of the stuff there now. Uh, one of the things I'll just tell you is 
they had these grape leaves in a can. I know. You're like, what? Yeah. They're like, they're like Domas. I think they're called like Domas. They're, they're in the, the canned mm -hmm. jarred sauce and, you know, internationally-ish aisle. And uh, they're stuffed vine leaves. And it's a, you know, a white can. It's like about $2.50. I think there's eight grape leaves in there, you know, stuffed with rice and the whole thing. They're divine absolutely terrific these grape leaves. I haven't had better grape leaves I gotta be honest with you in fact if I have people over and I want to put out a little spread you know I'll get a couple cans of these grape leaves you know 24 three cans six bucks 24 grape leaves and it's a party you know just throw a little pita a little feta salads beautiful thing you know they're so delicious anyway I have more more to tell you about that but I really um I really like the store the only gripe with it right now is that they don't deliver. 